-hmm. Now, let's look at solving this guy with the same kind of techniques that we talked about solving from before. On Monday, we talked about solving this guy using completing the square. Really, the first thing you want to look for here is, does this guy factor? Um, 109 is prime. It's not going to help you out. You're not going to be able to factor this guy. But we know that this guy is going to be a great candidate for completing the square because not only do we have a lead coefficient of 1, what about this middle coefficient? It's even. It's even, which means it's going to be easy for us to do what? Say it. Divide, divide, divide by 2 and square it. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, before I can do that, though, we have to move the 109 to the other side. So x squared plus 20x equals negative 109. Now, remember what we're trying to do. So we're trying to find a number to put here so that whenever I factor, I get a square. Now, it's pretty easy to figure out how the stuff factors. We've talked about this before. What's half of 20? 10. So I'm going to put the 10 down here. And then when I square the 10, what do you get? 100. You get 100. Now, can I just put a plus 100 on the left side? What you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. <coughs> you all agree with that? Yes. Now, remember, I put the 100 here so that I could get a perfect square binomial. And I put the 100 here because what I do to one side, I do to the other side. So the reason I wanted this so that I could have a square, but why did you want to have a square in the first place? So I could use the what? No, nope. I was completing the square. So I could create a situation where I would use the square root property. So now that I have a square equal to a constant, I will use the square root property and take the square root of both sides just like this. What must we remember when we use this square root property? We have to remember the plus or minus because how many solutions am I expecting? Two. So I'm expecting two because the degree of my polynomial in the original the equation was two. So now I have what? X plus 10 equals plus or minus the square root of negative nine, but the square root of negative nine becomes what? 3i. The square root of 9 is 3, and of course, the negative factor inside is what gives me the i outside. Am I done here? When we solve, it's all about getting x completely by itself, right? That means I've got to move the 10 over. And we talked about how when we move things from one side to the other, and the plus or minus is already in play, it needs to go in front of that. So I'm going to write negative 10 plus or minus, yes, that's right. plus or minus 3i. Now, you mentioned before that since I've got the i here, I could separate this, but I'm not going to be able to do any more simplification. So I could go ahead and box this, and I would be totally fine with you guys doing that. You may also see your answers written like this, using that set notation. And we could say x equals negative 10 plus 3i and negative 10 minus 3i. So we can just list our solutions like this. So this is what we did last time. And now we're going to see what happens when Maybe things don't factor, and the quadratic formula, excuse me, and the completing the square does not work very well for us.